Bangladesh War Crimes Tribunal, that oddity of a, a statute in, in 1973, uh, little heard of, uh, probably hidden in a drawer for 40 years and brought out of a drawer in the year 2009, uh, arising from the uh, conflict between uh, West Pakistan, East Pakistan, Bangladesh Liberation War, and uh, eventually uh, causing the creation of the independent state of uh, Bangladesh. Uh, many people killed in the war, figures given of three million. I can't say to you how true that is, or what the analysis that caused that figure to be given. For my part, I'm always skeptical about that kind of stuff, and, and we try and find out what the real story is. As figures are given to stimulate, as we've seen in the course of our journey today, an international uh, response. Um, uh, it was a war uh, not uh, seen on our television screens in the same way that the Yugoslavia war unfolded. Um, it is a war that I, I guess did not have the same documentary exhibits preserved uh, in the same way that the Yugoslavia war did. Um, it was very much of a different time before the modern electronic age. Um, but because Bangladesh passed that International Crimes Tribunals Act, um, there was no actual pressure or inclination within the UN that there is now for public justice, for, for justice to be delivered. Nothing like that at all in 1973. Uh, we live in very much a different world now, as we've seen in the course of today, how the UN began to become an, an international legislative um, body. Um, in 2009, the uh, government uh, by the uh, party in power at the moment uh, had promised that there would be trials and there have been arrests and proceedings have commenced. Uh, in July 2010, arrest warrants issued against four Jamaat Islami leaders and um, they are the opposition party in Bangladesh. Now, let us look then at the Bangladesh legal structure to try and hold these uh, national prosecutions of international crimes. So the third variation of what we've been looking at. Um, there's been a, a challenge to what was an amendment to the Constitution in 1973 and the uh, removal of certain provisions from the Bangladesh Constitution um, so that international criminal trials <coughs> were not held with the same constitutional rights for the accused as there were for national prosecutions. Uh, and we're going to look now at some of those provisions because they might set the hearts and minds uh, racing. Um, Article 47.3 is, is where this story starts. Um, notwithstanding anything contained in the Constitution, no law or any provision providing for detention, prosecution, or punishment of any person who is a member of any armed defense or auxiliary forces, etc., etc., um, who is a prisoner of war for genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, other crimes under international law, shall be deemed void or unlawful, or ever to have become void or unlawful on the ground that such law or provision of any such law is inconsistent with or repugnant 
to any provision of the Constitution. So the Constitution giving the basic rights of society in Bangladesh in relation to anyone charged in relation to war crimes, if those uh, provisions of the statute dealing with the war crimes inconsistent with the Constitution, forget it. Um, that, that the Constitution is overruled. Um, inapplicability of certain articles of the Constitution in relation to these international criminal <coughs> tries. Uh, rights guaranteed under Articles 31, 35 and 44 shall not apply to any person to whom a, a law specified in Article 47 applies. Notwithstanding anything contained in this Constitution, no person to whom a law specified in Clause 3 of Article 47 applies shall have the right to move the Supreme Court for any remedies under this Constitution. So you can't even take out a claim to challenge it. Article 31, right to protection of law. This is taken away in relation to anyone being prosecuted for international crimes. Right to protection of law gives the uh, protection of the law to the citizens of, of Bangladesh, said to be an inalienable right of every citizen. We know that that's not true. That's a lie now. Wherever he may be, and of every other person for the time being within Bangladesh, and in particular, no action detrimental to the life, liberty, body, reputation, or property of any person shall be taken except in accordance with law. A, a very hypocritical right, you may think, in view of what we've just been looking at in the amended Constitution, Article 47. What else was taken away? Protection in respect of trial and punishment, Article 35. Uh, and there you can see it. No person shall be convicted of any offence except for violation of a law in force at the time of the commission of the act charged as an offence. Will be subjected to a penalty greater than or different from that, etc., etc. So, retrospective uh, laws um, not possible under the Bangladesh uh, <coughs> Constitution, forget it, in relation to international crimes. Article 35.3, also taken away, every person accused of a criminal offence shall have the right to a speedy and public trial by an independent and impartial court or tribunal established by law. Enforcement of fundamental rights, Article 44. Um, the right to move the High Court to enforce your rights under the Constitution, taken away. As a result of the emergence of these provisions under the Constitution, and the amended <coughs> constitution, the first defence team in Dakar challenged what was happening. Um, they eventually withdrew that challenge. Um, Justice Wahab said if the defence had not withdrawn the petition, he had been minded to rule against them anyway. He said that he thought a reasonable distinction could be drawn between the rights afforded to ordinary citizens, so we have extra ordinary citizens now, and other citizens <coughs> accused of war crimes. Um, so, summary, divergence between the national standards of uh, uh, Bangladesh criminal trials and those under the International Crimes uh, Tribunals Act 1973. Um, this International Crimes Tribunals Act contains within it the modus operandi of how the trials uh, are, are to work. We'll just have a look at a couple of the provisions um, and what they um, provide for. Uh, the tribunal has the power to try people who, who were involved in the forces, armed forces or auxiliary <coughs> forces. 
irrespective mm. of nationality, uh, who committed um, or has committed in the territory of Bangladesh crimes before or after the commencement uh, of the Act. Relevance of this is the different framework of what these international crimes are, whether they were originally crimes existing that people knew about. Generally, you can only punish people in, in respect of crimes that are known to be crimes. You can't backdate conduct to say that was criminal then, um, even though it wasn't uh, made into a, a, a crime at the time, and, and make people the subject uh, of punishment. <coughs> And we see here the international crimes which we've looked at earlier, the, the types of crimes which we're familiar with, crimes against humanity, etc., and including genocide uh, and war crimes. Um, so retrospective, um, any breaches of the Geneva Conventions is uh, made liable, but in fact, in the international uh, tribunals and courts, it's grave breaches, a particular area that is the subject of uh, international process and not the ordinary breaches. When the UK um, passed the Geneva Conventions Act in 1959 as amended in 1983, um, it was grave breaches that we uh, led our name to that could be prosecuted within the UK if grave breaches of uh, um, the Geneva Conventions had happened, in fact, anywhere in the world. Um, and again, a little known um, power uh, subject to the um, authority of the Attorney General. Um, liability for crimes. Um, a matter we've been discussing in relation to JCE and the interrelation of a uh, person's conduct and what they may be liable. Um, several persons, each of such person is liable for that crime in the same manner as if it, as if it were, were done by him alone. Um, the concept of command responsibility was brought into this um, statute very much following, in fact, the Nuremberg and Tokyo uh, definition of command responsibility. Um, no um, um, a defense of because of your official position, um, therefore you can't be made responsible. Uh, that, that is not a, a, a defense. So official position, does it include head of state? Does it include... Prime Minister. Um, the international acts now explicitly specify heads of state um, and various defences that <coughs> can't be uh, uh, used by accused people that they were acting under domestic law. Um, judges who are appointed under Article 6, of, of great interest here is Article 6.8 neither the constitution of the tribunal nor the appointment of its chairman or members shall be challenged by the prosecution or by the <coughs> accused or their counsel. So even though the judge may, may have something against him, a demonstration of bias, de demonstration of uh, prejudice, no challenge permitted. Once appointed, that is it. Um, investigators have the right to uh, question people, uh, anybody who may be acquainted with the facts and, and circumstances 